Hey. Hey. Best value. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, before we started, when I was counting down, I did this American accent, and I just want you to know that it's better than any of yours. Oh, well, excuse me. Um, I want to talk about... Forever. How have you been? Well, I've been watching Legend of Korra, and if you'll indulge me, um, I'd I'll like... I'll completely to... indulge you right now. Yeah, of course, Greer will. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I thought she might. Um, I want to talk about, like, okay, so I loved the first season. I loved, like, the cool 1930s steampunk thing. I thought that was awesome. Um, I, like, the characters, I think, need a little working on. Like, I love Korra, um, although I think she can be kind of a dick sometimes. Um, Marco, I like fine on his own. I hate his relationship with her. I don't think they did any groundwork on that. Love Tenzin. Um, love Lin Bei Fong. Um, I'm glad you like Bei Fong. She's awesome. Yeah, I love her. She's fucking amazing. It's Mindy Sterling from Austin Powers. Like I had kind of like a tiny freak out about that because I love Austin Powers. Uh -huh. um, I um, yeah, love Tenzin. Um, hate Tenzin's kids. Um, only really <laughs> boy. He kind of looks like a sort of freakish rugwrap. Um. And he really does look like he's out of the regrets. So yeah. I noticed that too. But like, without being cute, like the Rugrats were cute. He's annoying as fuck. Um, the Rugrats are not that cute. They are cute. They are. Uh -uh. Cute. He's not cute. He sucks. He sucks for even for a baby. Like I don't even know as well because he's meant to be a baby, but he like walks around and talks like he's like some sort of monster. I hate him. Wait, are you uh, talking about the real Rugrats? Like I heard Rugrats. No. No, we're comparing the kid from Legend of Korra to uh, Tommy from the Rugrats. I was, like, I was just, I, yeah, I was going to say, that, was there a Rugrats Korra crossover I wasn't no. aware of? If there was, it would be me, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really awesome. I would have watched that. Yeah, Grey would have funded the shit out of that. Like, Grey would have <laughs> made it And we all would have watched. Take all my money. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, like, Bowen, I kind of think they need to do more work on him to, like, because he's, he's a really good character in the sense that he's a little, like, sucker, he's kind of the goofball, but they need to, oh, I don't know, I'm thinking they need to give him, like, a little bit more badassery, just so that he isn't just a big sad schlub. Yeah. Um, um and I, I didn't elaborate on this further when we talked about it earlier, but, like, I really do wish they had used Bowen a lot more than they did, they ended up doing in the show, because... I really like Bolin. I oh. love his voice actor is so good. And I just like him as a character a lot more than his brother. Like, way more. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, it, I think the thing is, is if you're going to have a kind of brooding, good-looking guy like uh, Marco, then you need to make him endearing and you need to make him genuinely vulnerable like um, like Zuko. Um, the only, The only, like... Oh, sad thing he has going for him is that his parents are dead. So he has, like, Bruce Wayne syndrome. Yeah. Where I, you're just supposed to feel bad for him solely on the fact that his parents were killed. Yeah. Bruce, oh, yeah. Poor guy. His parents, his, parents, were, his parents were literally killed Bruce Wayne style in, like, an alley by firebenders. After yeah. After home from the opera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know. Like, I... Yeah. I'm sure under real life circumstances, if someone's parents had been killed, I'd feel sorry for them. But uh, like this time, it just doesn't cut the mustard. Um. You'll you'll learn to really not like Mako because uh, he just plays around with Korra and Asami like they're nothing. They are uh, shaggy Mako. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Belter. <laughs> um. <laughs> Because, um, like, because like the entirety of season two, Mako's character in the entirety of season two is like, oh, I like you, Asami, uh, but I really like Korra. Oh, but I really do like Asami. Oh, but I'm, like, making out with Korra now. Um, let's break up Asami uh, so I can make out with Korra some more and then break up with Korra and then tell her I'm not going to get b back together with Asami, but I guess I am. You're uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, in it. And like, I'm watching this show like this is supposed to be a a an Avatar thing. Where's the Avatar stuff? 
Yeah, right. I mean, like that was the it impression took the that theaters I... the end of season two to figure out that no one gave a shit about Korra and Mako or Makora if you want to get ship name with it. Well, like I am. Um... I would have yeah. preferred if they had to make a romance in that part of in that area of the show, I would have liked Cora and Bolin. They went on a date in an episode, and they, like, seemed like they enjoyed themselves. Every time Cora and Mako are around each other at all, they act like they can't stand each other, and, like, they're just miserable. And I'm like, yeah, why yeah. even have this if they're miserable around each other? I don't understand. No, I don't understand either. And, yeah, like, Cora and Bolin, they did go on a date, and it was adorable. And, like... I, I found Bolin kind of more... Because I found Bolin a little irritating at the beginning. And it's like, that whole episode broke my heart. His reaction to finding out that Cora and Marco were making out was so endearing and sweet. Um, and yeah, their relationship. Like, if they were going to have, like, the male on female romance, that would have been much more interesting. They do um, give... They do live... Oh. They do give Bolin a girlfriend later on, like a legit girlfriend, and I'm really oh, happy. Wow. That's really nice. I mean, but yeah, like Marco, like, yeah, when him and Cora are together, they do just seem miserable. And it's like what they do when, it's like in the second episode, Cora's like, I think we're meant to be together. But where the fuck did that come from? They didn't, they didn't seed that. Yeah, you know? exactly, which is... <laughs> I guess, like, now you kind of understand where I'm coming from with, like, they really wanted to make another Aang Katara, but yeah. Aang Katara, or uh, Katang, I think, is the Katang. ship name. Katang. <laughs> I swear to sound God, effect. that's the that ship name. Like a sound effect a sword would make if it hit the wall, like, Katang. <laughs> like, in a comic or something, look at outrageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, Six pow, Katang. Uh, yeah. I like, it. That, man. I like it. I like it. They tried to make another another one of those, but the thing that it was about Katara and Aang was that you saw their relationship grow over time. It happened totally organically, and it was beautiful. Like but then in, I, in Korra, they just kind of like go right for it. Yeah. I, I really, I really, no really one, didn't. no one liked it. No one. I don't know a single like sane person over the age of like twelve who liked Makora at first, or at all, or wanted it to end that way. You know what I really, really hated? I hated in the first episode of book two when they were making out right next to Bolin. Like, and, like, <laughs> yeah. each other. Like, I wanted to slap the smiles right off their faces. Like Later on, later on, like, pretty much the series tongue-in-cheek, like, does make fun of Mako for being, like, a huge dick. Like, being, like... Switching around from Korra to Asami, not telling the other one that they're doing it. Like, that's why I don't like Mako, is, like, he's just such a, he's such a player, like, and not in a good way. Like, he would switch around from Korra to Asami behind their backs and not tell the other one. And I know that it's a kid's, I know, well, I, okay, I know that it's not technically like even though it is a kids show like lots of adults watch it but ultimately it is still made for kids it is still on Nickelodeon and that's a really really poor kind of it's not really I don't want to say it's inappropriate but it's like I I think you know you can show drama the preteens love it they love the drama but the thing is, like, you can show kids like reality and you can show them darkness and you can show but I think if you're going to have stuff about relationships, I just think you need to be careful what you're showing kids. Like, maybe that's wrong of me. I don't know. I I, I just don't think it's kind of cool for a kid's show to be showing, like, some asshole guy fucking around with two women. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't Especially know. since some a character like Asami was in the middle of it, and she just, like, showed up. And now she's in the middle of his bullshit. I'm like, she doesn't deserve this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what part of her, what part of her character and her personality that they had showed us at that point? Like, at what point would I root for Mako in any scenario? That's Just because it. Asami's new. Everyone thought she was going to be a villain. And I'm like, no, she's not. No. Believe me. She's not going to no. be a villain. And then she didn't be a villain. And I was so happy that I was right.
You called it, Gray. You called it right, bro. And because I saw her and I'm like, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> she, she is my I, my flower. I love her. I, she's my favorite Korra character by far, by the way. Like, she's fucking awesome. I thought your flower was your profile picture. Yeah. Uh, it's a dog with Grey. flower on its head. I, um, like, I love Asami as well. And I really, really like... Um, her dad as one of the villains in book one and I think that all the villains in book one are fantastic like um, yeah I thought all that stuff worked really well like the kind of um, the tensions between the benders and the kind of ordinary civilians um, and how there wasn't really like one party that was in the right or in the wrong I thought that was very very honest like mm-hmm. there were people that just wanted to live their ordinary lives and then on both sides there were people that wanted power um and yeah i think that's very very true to life like you know i don't think in any culture like one group is like solely the villain or solely the good guy like yeah it just i i thought that worked really well i thought that was a very like clever like well expressed message um just so you know cora i feel like one of the more adult themes that they explore in books three and four which is why i love books three and four so much is like going back to asami's dad like Later on, like, Asami's dad wants to, like, f- like make up with her. Like, have her forgive him. Oh, yeah. And, like, there's a whole subplot with Asami about her internal struggle of, like, figuring out whether she should forgive her father or not. How about Asami? And I feel like that's kind of, like, a like an adult theme that I didn't see coming, and I'm glad that they put in. Because it's really important, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the thing is, is like, it was an important know, subplot that they like they cared enough about to like, you know, show yeah. about her character, you know. And you can show, like, yeah, like I said, like you can show kids themes that are complicated and dark, but and have them going through these like struggles. But I did, yeah, I suppose the Marco thing. I think, <laughs> I think what I mean is that I don't think it's quite right to like have a character that you're meant to be rooting for behaving the way that Marco behaves with Korra and Asami, like, I, yeah, I just think you need to be careful with stuff like that. Well, no, he's badass, because he's a firebender like Zuko, right? Uh, no. Zuko's a much more interesting character than Marco, like, I mean, but that doesn't even describe it, like, Zuko is light years ahead of Marco. To, like, they settle down on the Mako a lot. Like, he becomes, like, almost a background character in book four, pretty much. Oh, yes. I don't no hate him as much... Fuck. I don't hate him as much as you do, but I just don't give a Ugh, shit about his he's relationships. He's terrible. He's yeah. fucking awful. He's not Anyway, as as... the worst part is, like, they named <laughs> that character after the voice actor, Mako, who died... They're like, we should name, we should give someone the name Mako Mako in Legend of Korra, and that's who they give it to. I know. And he, Shoot he played, me in the head. Shoot me in the played, fucking head. He played one of the best characters in Avatar. Like, And then he's named after the worst character in television history. <laughs> Irony. Um... I think I'm done, I think I'm done talking Korra, um, I feel bad, like, I've kind of monopolized the conversation with this thing that only me and Greer are interested in, so if Georgia uh, have something they want to talk about, I think we should finish give Finish them- it, you sh- you, which you should be able to finish it before next time, because Korra's relatively short. I will try to, yeah, I will definitely try to, um... It but felt like, short to me. It didn't feel as long as Airbender to me, but Airbender felt really long to me. Well, Airbender, the seasons were twice as long, weren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I've said everything I need to say about Chorus so far. Um, I promise, don't let book two get you down. Just get through and get to those Avatar 1 episodes in the middle. That'll hook you. That'll get you. Yeah. Uh, those Avatar 1 episodes are really good. It's going to be a fucking endurance test. I mean, it's going to be like watching The Room every week, but I'll... <laughs> well, there there Cora are some there are some good that. characters that get introduced in Season 2, like... Um... Sorry, Brett, I want to stop you for a minute. George is about to do her Tommy Wiseau impression. Oh, okay. Oh, 
I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll let it... Plot, I, <laughs> I don't watch the show. I don't know all the characters, so I can't really make a joke except what I just did. Like, <laughs> in book two, like in book two, they have, um, like, a Desna and Eska, the twins, yeah, they seem um, that they introduce. Uh, and one of the twins is Aubrey Plaza, and that's pretty amazing already. Um... And then uh, Varric and Julie, they become big characters, which is awesome, because you told me, like, I like that, that 1930s talking dude, and I'm like, Varric? And you're like, yeah, and I'm like, good, because he's the best character. He's great, I really like him. Um, yeah, he's kind of like, he's one of those, like, 1930s businessman people, so he like, he's like, hey, and he talks like this, and like, I can't even do it. Like, he's a great character, though, like, if you watch Korra, like, look out for him, people. It's fucking awesome. And, uh, yeah, bes- besides that, like, book two is kind of, like, drag. Yeah, I think it would be a bit of an experience test, but I want to get through uh, it, because I think there is enough about Korra that I like. Dude, the rest of it is totally worth okay. it, though. Get through it. And it all kind of, the weird thing is, like, they all kind of fit together. Like, book two doesn't feel, like, separated from everything else. Like, it all fits together. Because they managed to weave it into the plot pretty well, actually. They managed to weave it into the overarching plot, surprisingly. So Okay, well I I think yeah, if we um I yeah, I've pretty much said all I need to say about Korra. Um gonna give like Georgia and Kevin. I can, I can I can bring something up. Um the fact that I finally watched Big Hero Six. Ah, isn't it amazing? I have not seen No it one yet. told me no one told me that Baymax was like the cutest fucking thing on earth. <laughs> oh, oh my god. So cute. He's so. Why the- didn't anyone tell me this? <laughs> I kind of got that feeling from the stuff I've seen. He does seem really I, sweet. I thought you'd know, Grill. Like I thought, Big Hero Six would have been on your radar because it's Marvel. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did the research. I did the research, and you weren't lying that it's a Marvel thing because it actually is. Like the there is a comic series called Big Hero Six that was published no, by Marvel. Oh, okay. I, I know oh, a lot wow. of the. Story. Like, it, and it was, like, it was, like, gritty, and, like, they just kind of, like, g it, I guess, with Disney. Because it was, like, an old comic strip or something. But that's okay with me. I think what they did, they did really, really well. Like, I, I'm... Oh, yeah, like, to... Baymax in, in that comic was, like, a killing machine or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wow. no. Like, total opposite, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they kind of, they didn't try and hide that in the marketing. They were like, yeah, we're taking elements of Big Hero 6 and we're going to, we're going to make it our own thing. Um, and it, it, I also love how they, the, I mean, again, with the Marvel thing, they pretty much gave Baymax like an Iron Man suit, right? Yeah, kind of. It's great, isn't it? Like, that's like a, that was like a full fledged, full blown 100% Iron Man suit. That was a fucking Tony Stark, <laughs> a Stark product that he built and put on, put on put on Baymax. That would be a great Easter egg if you saw the Stark logo on there. Oh, yeah! Oh, man, I've got to look out for that. Well, That's I don't know if, it, if it's there. I'm just saying it would be cool if it was. No, I will. I mean, because it's entirely possible, though. Both Disney and Marvel do throw in Easter eggs. Um, like, uh, yeah, I just loved it. Like, I, you care about every single character. The animation's beautiful. Like, I just thought it was genius. It's, like, my favorite Marvel movie. It's really good. I, I liked it a lot. And Baymax is adorable. Oh my god, I want, like, I want, like, everything Baymax now. Like, I want Baymax things. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know that's exactly how I felt. Like, I've got to say, the marketing on that movie is second to none, because, like, I do, I want all the Baymax stuff. I want to be surrounded by Baymax. Like, I completely, like, I looked at that character... Like, the whole time, I thought that character was, like, a silent character. I didn't know the character talked. He talks? He doesn't have a mouth. I didn't know that the robot talked. Yeah. And then the robot opened its mouth, and I'm like, well, that's adorable. It's not even a cute voice. It's just, like, a monotone voice. But he what? says, like, the cutest stuff. It's a beautiful <laughs> monotone. It's a happy monotone. Please excuse me. While I deflate myself or something, like, release some air, because he gets stuck in a fucking window. (laughs) It's the guy that played Pete Hornberger in 30 Rock, and he just brings, like, this real warmth to that character without doing very much. And you just, even though he's, yeah, even though he's, like, a robot, 
you really believe he cares? Like, you know, and he Please hurt your pain on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> yeah, and when he hugs, when he hugs, um, I forget the name of the main character actually. Hero. Well, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, Big Hero Six. I should probably should have remembered that because like uh-huh. hero spelled with an I because it's Japanese. Yeah. But he hugs him, and he's like, like. There, there, it is all right, or something like that, and you're just like, oh, yeah, because he looked up like the whole psychiatric guide on grief. Yeah, <laughs> I want one. I want one. He's much more sympathetic than most real human beings. I'll tell you what, I loved the T.J. Miller character in Big Hero Six because he was pretty much just T.J. Miller. I uh, yeah, I, as I'm... a Disney character, like he was. <laughs> He was the guy. I don't know anything about T.J. Miller, but I loved that character, especially his... You should, watch, um, you should watch Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. I haven't seen a lot of it, but it's good from what I've seen. It's like, I guess I could compare it to the IT crowd, but it's not really the IT crowd. It's like Big Bang Theory if it were actually good. Oh, <laughs> right, that- oh shots fired. Big Bang Theory if it were actually, like, a fucking remarkable piece of art. Ah. <laughs> Like, it's a nerd show. Like, it's about nerds. I, um... Without being, like, an asshole about it. I'm oh so God, glad there are... I'm so glad there are more nerd shows out there now to, like, counter the Big Bang Theory. Yes, Silicon Valley is, like, the big... Like, people really like Silicon Valley. You should watch Silicon Valley. Like, if you... I hear people say, if you liked IT Crowd, you should watch Silicon Valley. And it's kind of true, except it's not a sitcom or anything. It's an HBO show. Oh, Okay. So, oh, that's yeah. and swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys... So, Grit, you watched the IT crowd. Did George... I watched, like, three episodes of the IT crowd. I haven't watched all of it. You need to watch the rest of the IT crowd. I don't, like, run, don't walk. It's a fucking... The only thing I remember run, from the IT crowd... Watch this program. <laughs> is, is, the one about, is the one about the fire, and, like, there was that really long phone number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, the guy was, like... Something's caught on fire, and he's like, I'll just put this next to the fire. <laughs> like, I I just love how surreal it is. Like, the guy that wrote it, Graham Linehan, like, he wrote Black Books, um, which I don't know whether you've ever watched. Um, That's about a library, right? No, it's about a bookstore run a bookstore, by yeah. this really, like, angry Irish guy. Um, and he has, like, an assistant called Manny who's really, really sweet. He's, like, this sweet, hairy hippie. Um, and then they have, like, this drunken neighbor called Fran. Um, really? <laughs> She's got my How's- name. She's got How mine. spot on. <laughs> it's actually me. Yep, FYI. What a twist. I know, right? Um, and then he also, like, one of the first things he wrote, Graham Linehan, was this um, show about these, like, three priests, like, living on this island in the middle of nowhere. And it was called Father Ted. And, like, one of them was, like, this really, really violent drunk. And the other one was, like, a moron. Um, and, oh, sorry, Greer. And, um... Yeah, and then, like, one of them was this guy that had been, like, made to live on this island because he had, like, he was a priest, but he stole a bunch of funds from this, like, dying boy's bank account. So it's, like, a really, really, like, fucked up, like, thing about, like... That is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a, it's a comedy, it's a really funny show, and it's really, like, all his humour is really, really surreal. But it's basically, like, it's a real, like, not an Atana church, but just, like, kind of making fun of it in a very way. I would probably love to watch that. I need to watch more of those shows. Father Ted Father Ted is a great show. Father Ted is one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Can like, I ask you something about Father... Is it like... I know it's, it's like, you know, a European show, British show. Is it like... Is it all European humor or is it like an international enough so that Americans would like it? Um. Well, it's not kind of topical. So you'd get... I think, like, the the humour is, it's very, very surreal, but it's not like, they're not referencing very many things that are particularly, it's I- Irish, by the way, it's produced oh, in... Oh, okay, oops. <laughs> oh, no, that's alright, well, it's produced in England, and, like, you know, set, uh, well, not set, but, like, filmed in England, um, but it's all Irish actors and an Irish writer and everything, but it's not particularly british in terms of like the topical stuff i would say the humor is quite english and that it's really surreal but it's very very funny and very very dark and really well acted um i'd I'd, I'd definitely recommend father ted like out of all those shows it's i think like in some ways 
like the bravest um and it and yeah it's insanely funny it's one of the funniest shows i've ever seen i would definitely recommend it um i'll tell you what i what i started uh from the beginning i actually uh started rick and morty from the beginning because people are freaking out about rick and morty right now and i'm like i don't want to miss out so i started rick and morty from the beginning and i'm only on like episode three or something what's rick and morty Rick and Morty is the greatest show ever. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, the best thing Adult Swim has going for them right now. Um, it's an animated show um, done by Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland. And they're incredibly funny. And it's it's just really funny. It's, like, I want to say it's very Back to the Future influenced, but it's just, like, the character, like, the two characters, the two main characters look like Doc Brown and Marty McFly a little bit, but that's like about it. Like that's where the Back to the Future like similarities end. Um, oh, so that's why he's called Morty instead of Marty, huh? Yeah, Fran, I don't know how you have not watched Rick and Morty, I don't, considering I, didn't watch it is it. I have. I've heard based mixed, Dan Harmon. I've heard mixed things about it, honestly. It's it's funny as shit. It is so fucking funny. Where did Fran go? I'm right sure. when I start talking, she went about to go watch it. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, well, I, I can't really comment. I mean, I've seen one episode and I, I, you know, really liked it, but... Did you watch the episode with John Oliver in it? No, I didn't. Um... There's an episode with John Oliver in it. <laughs> oh, my. That's um, very enticing. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I do love the Oliver, the Jolliver. Um, Jolliver? <laughs> yeah. That's my name for him. That's my little pet name for him. Um, like... I need to... Fran, back up more from your thing. Like, you now you're sounding, like, muffled for some reason. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Um, yeah, no, well, I, I haven't seen, um, very much Rick and Morty. Like, yeah, I thought it was funny. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Um... You have to watch more of it. It's funny as shit. I will. I definitely will. I really like okay. Van Harmon. Like, apart from the fact that in real life he's kind of a cunt, I, I like it. I like it. So. I fucking fucking love Rick and Morty. I've not seen any of season two, though. Like, I keep saying I fucking love this show, but I have not seen any of season two. <laughs> it's, all I know about it is that it's very, very Dan Harmon. Like, I think how, that, like, the, the ideas in it, um, and how kind of quite, like, irreverent and cynical it is, and having, having a lead character that's, like, a drunk, that's very Dan Harmon. Yeah. I kind of feel like Rick could be Dan Harmon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have a lot to say about it apart from that. Actually, the um, uh, Gray from Rooster Teeth, who does, uh, this will be relevant to Fran, who does Rusty in X-Ray and Vav, say he was very inspired by uh, Rick and Morty, by Rick's oh, character. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can completely see that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I made you watch a bunch of Rooster Teeth stuff, like, a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, I tried to watch Red vs. Blue. Um, does it get better? Yeah. <laughs> I tried to watch Red vs. Blue. Does it get better? <laughs> uh, yeah, they started out... You have to realize when Red vs. Blue started out... No one was doing that stuff back then. Like, there was no guide to making that kind of content. So, it is very, like, janky at first. But the pr once the production quality goes up, it really starts to pick up a little more. Yeah, I do appreciate that. I do. I mean, I know. This is coming from someone who has not watched a lot of Red vs. Blue, by the way. I've not watched all of it. But it starts out really janky, really relying on, on the writing and the humor and stuff. But once it, the production quality goes up, um, yeah, it, like I said before, it really starts to pick up. But again, you have to remember that when they made that, when they first started doing that, like, like, that was back when, like, no one was doing online video. Like, YouTube did not exist, you know? I do, I definitely appreciate that. I think, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, I think for me all that really matters is that the story and the writing is good, like you say. I mean, does, like, does the first season of Red vs. Blue, does it have a solid story, would you say? Not really. There's not really a story for a while from what I've 
picked up on. Uh, it started, I just looked it up because I couldn't remember the exact year, but it did premiere in 2003. Wow, okay, no fair play. I there was no there was no streaming service back then for that shit. They, I mean, they were uploading it to their website for people to download. I mean, I absolutely love Rooster Teeth though. Like, I love um, I love X vs X Ray um, X Ray and Bob. I love Ruby. Um, I I made you watch Ten Little Roosters. I loved Ten Little Roosters. I thought that was an example of um, like, it really reminded me of, like. Made me kind of sad, actually. It was an example of, like, when, like, a bunch of producers or, like, content creators, they get together and they tell a story kind of semi-in character, um, and they have, like, a theme, like, sci-fi, whatever, like, this was a murder mystery, and it just made me, it really made me nostalgic for Channel Awesome and made me kind of sad, but it was great, I loved it, um, and, uh, what else? Yeah, uh, the Bruce Teeth animated adventures. I love um, the podcast stuff. I really love. Um, yeah, I I um becoming like a real city convert. I really really like their stuff. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's all coming yes. together. Um, Caitlin, like, did you have anything you wanted to like bring up? Did you have any like funny observations about things that you watch? Um, I just got to the Parks and Recreation episode where they went to London, and that was awesome. Ah, really? What's it like? <laughs> I was that sound. That was hilarious. <laughs> What's it like being in London through your television? <laughs> it was really awesome. I was just, I was dying laughing from that, and I was like, I really want to go to London now. I mean, I wanted to go before, but I was like, well, I really want to go to Hogwarts. <laughs> Hogwarts. <laughs> Yep, that's where Hogwarts is. Hogwarts. So you I want to go to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> like, like Hogwarts, you and every other nerd ever. <laughs> no, there was a line in this episode for anyone who hasn't seen it, but Andy, you know, the dumb character, he's outside of Buckingham Palace. He's like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Hogwarts. And the first character <laughs> is like, that's Buckingham Palace. You know Hogwarts is fictional, right? It's important for me to know that you, you know that it's fictional. <laughs> That's um uh Chris Pratt's character, isn't it, Andy? Oh yes. And I got to the part where he was about to go off to go film Gardens of the Galaxy. And I'm kinda kinda happy about this, I guess. Yeah, and he like slimmed down a lot. He did. Yeah. And they referenced it. He used to be like when he started on that show, he's like really chubby and then he just got like fucking jacked. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> he referenced it. He's like, Oh yeah, I stopped drinking beer for a month. That's why I'm skinny now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like Dude, um, I saw a picture I saw a picture recently of Chris Hemsworth because he just got done filming that um that uh Ron Howard movie, uh Heart of the Sea, where he's supposed to be like a fucking shipwreck victim, like a castaway. Feels like a sexy castaway he fucking, uh, remake. He fucking slimmed the fuck down. If you look at a picture of Chris Hemsworth at the end of filming that movie, like he has like no muscle I saw on him. Like he you posted, he looks dare I say slimmed down. Normal. Yeah, I'm like Oh my god, please eat something now. <laughs> you do like the bulky Thor. I'm concerned because he's like losing all these weight for these movies and then going back to doing Thor and he has to get fucking ripped as shit again. I'm like, I'm worried about it. Like, he's gonna hurt himself. Oh, I'm surprised when actors do that all the time because they're do- they, they do it so often for these roles. And, and and they, are, doing it. They, have, they have people there to help them out with that, like dietitians and like exercise people yeah. so that they don't, like, you know. Like, he slimmed down. You know, he slimmed down a shit ton for Ron Howard's. He did another movie with Ron Howard before this one called Rush, where he had to slim down a shit ton because he had to be in like a Formula One car, and then he bulked up again for Avengers. Can stop for a second and then he and imagine if like bulky Chris Hemsworth was in the race cars, Thor. It's like <laughs> <laughs> poor babe. Um, and then he he had to like eat a bunch of protein and shit again. And by the way. Before Rush, he had just got done doing Thor The Dark World. So he was bulky then, slimmed down, bulk up, bulk up again for Ultron, uh, and then slimmed down again for this other Ron Howard movie. Like, slimmed down a shit ton, lose a bunch of muscle weight, and now he has to bulk up again because he's about to film the other Thor movie. Do you guys like, think oh, that, um, Chris Pratt was still cute, though, in Parks and Rec? Like, I really do. Oh, yeah, when he was still, like, a little chub-chub. Yeah, I'm horrible. I, I, I really do. 
Like, uh, Caitlin, do you think that... He's always been really good looking to me. I don't know why people are just picking up on this now. <laughs> I know. Caitlin, do you think that, um, like, if you give me some stuff about what London was like in Parks and Rec, I can tell you whether it's true or just, like, a massive stereotype? <laughs> there are stereotypes of Parks and Rec? No, stuff about, like, England, whether that's a stereotype. Oh. They didn't do that many stereotypes, surprisingly. Was Those didn't like just didn't like Ron Swanson have like the the worst time in England because he's like so fucking American. He's, he's like the American character. And so he's like your leader. No, I think it was an other episode. Anyways, it's like your leader is a baby and an old woman kind of thing. Like, yeah, like, yeah. He hates Europe. And so most of the jokes are about him just hating Europe because he's so against socialism. <laughs> he's like, ugh, this place is gross. But even he ends up, he ends up going to, I think, Scotland, and he just goes to drink some beer, and then he ends up loving that part of it. Yeah, like, uh, to be honest, like, I can't disagree with, like, well, not all of it, like, but in terms of, like, yeah, your, um, your leader is, like, yeah, a baby and, um, an old woman, like, I, 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 I can't argue with that, he's right, that is dumb, <laughs> and there is a lot about Scotland to, like... Craig Ferguson's from there. Yeah, yeah. Good drink. Okay. Brave was sat, set in the movie. That's where you get corned in, beef. Potatoes. In Scotland. Karen <laughs> Gillan has a Scottish accent, and she's adorable. No, potatoes is Irish, oh, right? Oh, sorry. Like the Irish potato family. Yeah. stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potatoes is Irish, um, and so is Karen Gillan. She's hot. Um... <laughs> oh, Karen Gillan. Yeah. And, um, fucking Ewan McGregor. Yeah, have you guys seen, like, Louis C.K. talking about how Ewan McGregor is, like, the only guy that he's ever been attracted to? Like, he's the only yeah. guy. Yeah. I did not see that. I... He's so cute. Ewan McGregor is so, oh my god. He has that baby face, that's what it is. He's so cute. Hot. Yeah. yeah. He's beautiful, Ewan McGregor, I totally agree. And Louis C.K.'s, like, and I met him, and I was like like, speechless, like, I was like, oh my god, he's fucking beautiful, and then, like, weeks later, I was daydreaming about him, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that is adorable. So basically, like, weeks <laughs> later, you were still just, like, blinded by his beauty. <laughs> yeah. She was never the same. Fucking Louis. I love Louis. Have you guys ever watched Louis? I've seen uh, a few episodes. That show's really funny. I need to watch it. I love Louis. I love that show. I love Louis C.K. I was just watching a special a few months ago by him on Netflix. I like yeah. If you haven't seen his FX show, Louie, it's fucking brilliant. FX like, I cool. wish there were, like, 200,000 episodes of it. <laughs> I wish the brilliance could go on for that long. Like, I want so much more of Did him. Did they get canceled? I don't think so. No, he just makes them very oh. sparingly, I guess, because he's, like, always doing stand-up tours and stuff. Oh, okay. He's a very busy man. Rightfully so, he's a very busy man. Um, what else? Oh! <laughs> you wrote I wrote this down because I thought it was funny. Um, but I was talking with someone. I think I was talking with Fran, maybe? I don't remember. But Bobby I'm like... Somebody. I'm like, what if we went on the podcast and I did a thing where... Because it was about the time when I saw the Dragon Ball Z movie a couple weeks ago. And uh, I, th I sat down before the movie and I was thinking, like, what if I had seen this with someone who has no idea what anime is and has never seen Dragon Ball Z before? <laughs> like, how would I explain Dragon Ball Z to somebody? Oh, I, I And I realized, that. I realized, I'm like, well, that sounds dumb. Me trying to explain, like, I went through it in my head, like, I wouldn't watch that if someone had explained it to me like that. Or maybe I would, I don't know. Um... And I went through, like, different anime plot lines, and I would, like, say them out loud in my head to myself, and I'm like, no matter... And it's just with anime. When I try to explain an anime plot to someone, no matter how, like, serious it is, it just ends up sounding so stupid. Welcome to anime, honey. Welcome to anime. So I realized, what if I took Fran... And I guess Caitlin and a little bit of Georgia. I know some anime. Georgia, not, hasn't seen, not... Georgia hasn't seen too much I have anime, seen but some. she's seen some. Not as much as yeah. I have. But 
And then I wanted Heather to be here, so I don't think she's seen, like, any anime whatsoever. And I'm like, what if I took random anime and I tried to explain the plot line, and Fran and Caitlin, you would tell me whether you would watch that or not? I guess... I thought that would be that fun. That does sound fun, because I don't... I've never seen anime. I think it's all an episode of one. I know how you could describe Dragon Ball Z. It would just be a lot of screaming and a lot of punching, and that's it. There's a plot in Dragon Ball Why? Z, okay? But it's very complicated because it's lasted for Why? fucking years. And I wanted to start with Dragon Ball because it's just quintessential. Alright, well, yeah, you start whenever. I really love Dragon recording Ball. Whenever. I am really excited. Be fun. Okay. So, anyway, cray so cray. this is Dragon Ball. Okay, so Dragon Ball has four different series, okay? Let's get this straight. There's Dragon Ball Z. There's Dragon Ball. You should call the, the episode one. Anime V Cray Cray. <laughs> Yeah. Dragon Ball is the first series. Dragon Ball Z is the sequel. Dragon Ball GT is the non-canonical sequel to Dragon Ball Z, and no one likes it. <laughs> That's the and one Dragon... no one talks about. I like it. I don't... I kind of like it, actually. <laughs> People make it worse out oh. than it seems to be, but I kind of like it. Dragon Ball Super is the new series, which just came out, which is a sequel to all... which is a sequel to Z. It's not a sequel to GT. GT is like 150,000 years in the future or some shit. <gasps> anyway, so Dragon Ball starts out with a little kid named Goku with a monkey tail. Right? Okay. He goes on a quest with the teenage girl named Bulma. At the time, she's a teenager. They go on a quest to find the seven Dragon Balls, which when you get them all together, they summon this dragon that can grant a wish. Right? Cool. They meet all these characters along the way in the original Dragon Ball series. I don't know that much about the original Dragon Ball. All I know is, like, my knowledge lies with Dragon Ball Z, which was super popular when I, I was most younger. most people do. Most people yeah. are, that's their knowledge from. I had two friends in school. That was, like, their obsession. And, ugh, yeah, it was nauseating. I loved Dragon Ball Z when I was younger. Um, I think Dragon Ball Z had, like actually, like, already ended by the time I was into it, but when it was airing on American television, it was, like, really popular. Like, it was still going. Um, but Dragon Ball Z has a, not a spinoff series, but a remastering called Dragon Ball Kai, which is way better, which is, like, they shorten it up, because the thing about Dragon Ball is, like, the pacing, the original pacing and the original shows were terrible to make them last as long as possible. (laughs) So Dragon Ball Z is five years after Dragon Ball, Right. Goku is an adult, he has a son, uh, a humanoid arrives on Earth named Raditz, okay? He tracks down Goku, he's like, you're part of this extraterrestrial race called the Saiyans. You are half Saiyan. We didn't think there were any more Saiyans on Earth because they blew up our planet. So all of Dragon Ball Z is also pretty much getting together all the Dragon Balls and fighting all these people that come down from Earth, like Frieza... And there's, like, time travel later on. Of course there is. And, uh, <laughs> other Saiyans come to Earth, like Vegeta, who's, like, my husband. And he comes down from Earth, and he's, like, the prince of all Saiyans, and he's a total whiny piss baby, and he's <laughs> great. And, um, so there's, like, there's, like, Frieza... There's Cell, there's Majin Buu, that and that's, like, all of Dragon Ball Z, where they fight all these dudes... Not at once. That would be fucking awesome, though. <laughs> they fought them all at once. I mean, but that's like great. it sounds fairly straightforward so far. The only funny thing about it is the fact that there's a character called Vegeta. 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 That's even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vegeta. But anyways, Dragon Ball Z is super famous because Akira Toriyama's art style is like really kind of like different from everything else that's out there. Um. Especially in the manga. The manga is super long, actually. Um, but uh, GT, I don't remember much of GT, which is, again, non-canonical. Akira Toriyama had no part in it, really. Um, it's five years after Dragon <laughs> It's not 500,000. It's like five years after Dragon Ball Z ends. And uh, there are these st- things called Black Star Dragon Balls, which make no sense. <laughs> and he... Goku turns back into a child and has to go and fucking travel across the universe with his own granddaughter. And there's a bad guy who's literally named Baby. And <laughs> That's so it's weird. really weird. 
I don't remember much of of, of GT. This is why. <laughs> and then Dragon Ball Super is just a continuation of uh, the Dragon Ball Z series. Not GT, but Z. It's a direct sequel, and it follows the events that the new line of movies are setting up, and it's kind of like... I don't even know, because I haven't watched Super yet, because I'm waiting for it to come in English, because that's the only... The only way I'll watch Dragon Ball is with the English cast. This is... I'm getting really nerdy, by the way. The only way I'll watch fucking Dragon Ball is if it's with the English... If it's with the English cast, because I grew up with that fucking English cast, and I love them so much, and they're still doing Dragon Ball! And, uh... When you say English... Yeah, that's right. When you say English, do you mean English like I'm English, or English like they speak English? English, like, speaking English. Oh, yeah, okay, right. English dub of Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, so that's Dragon Ball Z. There's a lot of fighting in it. That sounds fairly, like... You know, it sounds fairly straightforward. I mean, you know, in as much as any other sci-fi or fantasy show is. Like, I mean, I've definitely heard weirder anime plots. Um, all the plots to any video game you've ever described to me, I would say, are weirder than that. Okay. I would watch I it. It's just, it sounds pretty... It does sound kind of weird, but it does, does sound like it's not too complicated. Especially if there's yeah. a lot of fighting in it, so I'm like, okay. I, could I, I did not even go over most of the specifics. That is the super incredibly abridged version. I've never been into Dragon Ball, so... I mean, I understand why people like it, but it's just, it's never really appealed to me, like, ever. It is iconic. Sorry. It is iconic. I think the I thing know, is, with, but, like, the specifics of anything is, like, those are the bits that are the weirdest. Like, the minutiae of any series, that's when you get into the weird stuff. Yeah, that's uh-huh. what I'm waiting for. Get to the weird stuff, Greer. <laughs> there are also uh, 14 movies, and if you count every single video game of Dragon Ball in the Dragon Ball universe that has ever been made, even the ones that are only released in Japan, it's about 150 of them. Damn. Video games. Blimey. That's a that's lot. Pretty, that is a lot. That's remarkable. I mean, you know, it sounds like a fun show. Um, like, I mean, in terms of the list of anime shows that I'm going to check out, it's probably not, like, number one yet, but, like... Oh, yeah, because it's, it's, it's really long. It's... <laughs> I mean, would you say, like, would you say there are characters that, like, it's not just kind of a fighting show. There are characters that you care about. Yeah, but it's also a fighting show. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, characters there's, like, tournaments and long. stuff, and you, you do end up caring about, like... I really like Vegeta. He's kind of like a tragic character because, you know, he comes to Earth, his planet's been blown up, and he's the prince of nothing. Aww. But he still thinks he's like the prince of something. Aww. I already know. You know what? At this point, he's the prince of memes because it's over 9,000. Yeah, <laughs> fucking <laughs> best, best dank meme. The next one I'd explain is like one of my favorite old series. And, uh, it's, it was another one where I thought about, and I'm like, if I tried to explain this to, like, anyone with a brain, (laughs) it would be so dumb. (laughs) And it's the most, it's so dumb. (laughs) And, but I love it. And, Fran, I have to tell you, like, I know you know about Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it's, like, one of the dumbest things in the world. I don't I'll tell know. you why. I only know the name. Yu-Gi-Oh! You only know the name. I only know the name. Have yeah, me too. Have you ever played the trading card game? Never played the trading card game, no. What about the rest of you? I've only uh, seen the- I know the, the cards exist, and I know that- I know the name in the show, but I don't know anything about them. Yeah, same here. Like, I know it's like a kid with crazy hair fighting people with crazier hair. So it's- <laughs> Lots and that's, lots of big hair. Yeah, that's a part of it. Uh, as for me, I could probably still play a mean game of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you put oh, and the I also, cards... I also know that the parody is very popular. Oh yeah, I love the it. The abridged. Everybody loves the abridged. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. So, the cards are, like, I want to start playing the card game again, actually. That's something I forgot to mention. I, I want to start playing the card game again at some point. <laughs> so the anime and the manga are fucking dumb. And I love it. <laughs> I That's love it fire. So much. I started rewatching the show on Hulu, and I'm like, 
oh my god, this is retarded, and I'm glad, because I, I watched it so much when I was, after I got through, I went through the phase of being, like, going through Pokemon, being, like, kind of done with Pokemon, uh-huh. as, like, for, as for the show, like, I stopped watching the show, but then I started watching more Yu-Gi-Oh!, <laughs> And so I went through the phase of going from Pokemon to Yu-Gi-Oh! Which usually, like, for a kid at that time, you would be into them at the same time. But, uh, I went from one to the other for some like, reason. Do you feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! is more sophisticated than Pokemon, then? Oh, no. They're both equally dumb. <laughs> I, so, can I ask, is it normal to pronounce the E in Pokemon in America with such kind of, like, prevalent... Pokemon? Pokemon. Yeah, a lot of people do. And, um, yeah, kind of, Americans pronounce it Pokemon. In, in Japan... I do love how you say Pokemon. I do love that. In, in Japan, Aww. the technical pronunciation of Pokemon is Pokemon. So we're all wrong. Actually, so it's, the, the E isn't pronounced either, but it, it, it's Pokemon. That's how I've always said it. Um, another one is Monty Python. The way Americans say Monty Python. I really Monty like Python? That. Yeah, Monty well, Python? You're not, you're not saying it in the funny way now. You're ruining my story. Boo. <laughs> way to go, guys. Way to go. Jeez. No, some <laughs> Americans, they say it like... How do they say it? Like, oh my god, I love Monty Python. Monty Python? Like that? They kind of put a lot of emphasis on the on. Uh, I want to live in a world where Valley Girls actually say that, like you just did. That sounds like a glorious place. <laughs> the idea in hindsight that a bunch of fucking cheerleaders are watching Monty Python and doing, like, the nights that say me, that is that incredibly would be, unlikely. It would be beautiful, though. It would be really, really good, like, the fucking, like, Ministry of Silly Walks, a bunch of, like, <laughs> Valley Girls. That's awesome. So here's the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> yes, please, indulge and tell us. Okay, so, in ancient Egypt, they would play, <laughs> it already starts out, like... <laughs> thousands of years ago. <laughs> Pretty much, no, it really does, thousands of years ago in ancient Egypt. Isn't it always? They would, okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make it sound sophisticated, but it's not working when you start out about, a, like a, like a, series that's supposed to be about card games and you start out with with ancient egypt in ancient egypt literally in ancient egypt they would fucking play the magic these magic card game tournaments i was just gonna ask big stone slabs you like the fair so the pharaohs like you know play the cards oh my god does that mean oh my god that the most they were on like huge stone slabs they weren't actually a card card game yeah (laughs) yep i said it and then, like, <laughs> they would—they were called shadow games, and if you lost them, you got sent to the shadow realm. But that was like in the American version, it was called the shadow realm. But in the Japanese version, you just died. Like <laughs> the 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 American version of this show was very PG. It was made by the same people who did the Pokemon English version, so it was very PG. No one died. But Everyone silly, got sent to the Shadow Realm. Hold on, hold on. That's silly, though, because, like, even all kids can k- kind of understand death, even in, like, a crazy show like that. That seems kind of extreme, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, I do. I mean, it's why I like Avatar so much. They don't shy away from talking about death and fucked up shit like that. <laughs> I, could do a whole, I could do a whole episode of anything on, on 4 Kids Entertainment. I could do a whole episode about it. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. But anyway, so, they played these shadow games, and and then the pharaoh took these items, uh, the millennium items, there are like 12 of them, I think, and he locked this magic away for like thousands of years, and then one day they get like uncovered, and then somehow like some kid gets them, this kid named Yugi, and then when this power comes on, then his alternate ego is the pharaoh from thousands of years ago, but he doesn't remember who he is. Can I ask you something? Yes. His name, if his first name is Yugi, does that mean his last name is O? No. <laughs> oh, be funny. You're close. It is Moto. Oh, okay. Which literally, his name, I swear to God, his name literally translates out to King of Games in Japanese. <laughs> that is what his name translates out I to. I call him King of Pointy Hair. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. And so the first season is him and his friends, like, going to Duelist Island, the which is run is by this guy named Pegasus. Of course. And they have to... You're dealing with gods, you gotta have a Pegasus. Oh, yeah. That play. But this is just, like, it's normal life. Like, this is present day now. And... You, like, the first season sets up, like, the rest of the seasons, which is where, like, the real meat of the story is. Yeah. And it's all about the Millennium Items, and it's like, I don't understand this ancient Egyptian thing. And that's where they, like, explain the ancient Egyptian shit to you. And, uh... Surely if he's king of games, that could mean anything. He could be really good at basketball, or, like, I mean... No, he's, I it only means he's good at this card game, oh, really. Bitch. To have seen like yeah Quidditch. I would have loved to have seen an alternate version of Yu-Gi-Oh, where he was really really good at hungry hungry hippos. Or like our <laughs> Angry Birds or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like totally random. That would be hilarious. Time to really mention happy. another thing about this show, especially in the first season. Um, they could is reboot that... it and set it in Vegas, and he could be like a card shark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, they sort of like Fifty Shades of Grey style thing where he's really good at like sex games. Oh yeah. god. Uh, <laughs> damn it, Fran, you had to make it gross. So I did. the first season of the show, I forgot to mention the first season of the show, like it was pretty much when it was made, it was kind of made before there were like any sort of rules to the card game in real life. So the if I go back and watch these episodes and I'm like that card doesn't work like that. What are they doing? <laughs> you know? Like, why did... He can't summon a bunch of monsters in one turn? Like, shit like that. But they really, like, get into it. Like, it, it gets better in, like, season two. You know? There are five seasons of the original show. Of the original show. Only five? Oh, wow. There are five, and then there's, um... I would have thought it would be more than that. There are five spinoff shows. Oh. Wow. wow. That's a lot. <laughs> that all have a manga and an anime. And there are also, like, four... Three, three or four movies. Have you seen all of these, then? Every incarnation of Yu-Gi-Oh! and every manga you've read? I have seen... I've seen the first series, and I have seen the first spinoff series. I've seen, like, half of that. And, but I haven't seen anything after that. Because that's and when I grew up. The dumbest sounding thing about... I mean, I remember a bit now. Like, the boy, the way the boy is um, designed. Like, the design it's of the hilarious. boy. Is, yeah, they he's get, really... They get a new kid for every spinoff series, by the way. Because it keeps going into the future. Like, the spinoff series after the first series is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And it's like, ten years after... The, ser- the original series ends, and there's, like, there are, like, there are, like, dueling academies everywhere, so there are, like, schools for duel monsters. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I love the idea of a bunch of, like, ancient pharaohs, like, essentially playing Pokemon. I yeah. know, that's hilarious. Yeah, to me, that's the that's, dumb- why need, that's why they needed slaves to build the pyramids, they were too busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's by far the dumbest thing about the show, like, from what you've told me, the idea that they're all, like, sitting around being like, you're like, no, no, that's so unfair that you have that card, that's so unfair, like, these, like, ancient, like, dignified, I just love that. But then how, you know what else, it's like, if they were kings and and queens, and pharaohs, you think that they would have been like, you have that card? Well, that sucks, off with his head, and then just kill them. Yeah, yeah. It would be a lot shorter. (laughs) <laughs> I will tell you something, I think, like, the last season is pretty much all about, like, going into the past and, like, finding out all the ancient Egyptian shit. <laughs> and it's just so weird. Uh, like, this... It's weird. yu gi is really weird. It's, yeah. If you, actually, like, like. if you actually look at it, most people kind of take it for granted. But I think it's, like, really dumb. But I love it. I love... I love going back and watching it now as an adult. And I'm like, I could see why I like this a lot. I would watch this, I, mean, I think. I probably couldn't get emotionally invested in it, but it sounds like a fun show. I got emotionally invested in, like, season four when I was a kid. Like, I cried a lot during the show for no reason. 
I got emotionally invested in Pinky and the Brain, and I'm still kind of emotionally invested in that show. I stand by that. <laughs> hey, Brie, you're back. Hey, Caitlin, did, were you the one yesterday who said uh, you like puns? I do like puns. That was Check me. Check this out. I was just telling Caitlin, I love just, like, picked, like fun, random, random funny pictures. Because there's always just a plethora <laughs> of them on Facebook. <laughs> 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 Wait, let me see. Come find it. These are like dad jokes. I love dad jokes too, actually. There's a whole subreddit called Our Dad Jokes. Of course so there is. is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your mom is so fat the sorting hat. It's the top post of our dad jokes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yay. Yay. People who grow herbs are really efficient. They're great at time management. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking our dad jokes. <laughs> gold. Feeling someone's coffee is called mugging. Uh, the other day I here browsed that for a while. It was a nice gesture. Pasteurize too far to see. I uh, no, I don't get that one. Pasteurize too far to see. Pasteurize is too far to see. Oh, oh, okay. No matter how so, um, much you push the envelope, and now still like now heavy. someone now someone is uh posted uh remember the you know the dog shaming stuff, someone made uh-huh. someone made Pokemon shaming. No. Oh. There's also a, a a like kind of not, I would say it's a companion piece to our dad jokes is our three a.m. jokes. Oh Jesus. <laughs> So it's jokes for, like, the sleep-deprived? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what stones do sea, sea smoke? What's, what do s- stones in the sea smoke? Oh, I... Seaweed. hi <laughs> oh. What the... And oh, why, why did the I get computer it. freeze? I... Why did the computer freeze? I don't know. Someone left the windows open. Ah. Ha oh, ha. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, I'm so sorry. I clicked the wrong. I, I, that, was, that was me. I clicked the wrong thing and it hung up. Fran, Fran, what, what app does Alan Rickman use to send self-destructing messages? Oh, I don't know. Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I really like that meme of like um, Alan Rickman as Professor Snape, and he's like leaning back for some reason, and then like the thing, the writing underneath is just like the fuck. <laughs> yeah, oh, like yeah, that. yeah. I really like that. That very accurately describes how I feel a lot of the time. I'm actually like halfway through watching Half Blood Prince right now. It's making me really happy. Oh, <laughs> I've watched a lot of Harry Potter this weekend. Been a big stereotype. How British of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Americans like watching Harry Potter when it's like Harry Potter weekend on a uh, ABC Family. They'll show, like, Harry Potter movies all weekend. I can't but, watch it on there because they always make really weird edits for time. Yeah, they edit it down kind of weird. Just, like, there's I, I really simply. terrible moments to edit out where it, like, messes up things making sense, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, ABC Family does that a lot. I was watching, like, I watched some of Bruce Almighty. And, like, the like, edit I was watching, they were cutting out, like, bits of a scene. And I'm like, why are you cutting that? Nothing was, like... Nothing needed to be cut. There was no, like, you know, harsh words. There was no nudity. It was just, like, a few sentences that were nothing. It was... I don't know why they do that. It's for time, but then it just yeah, makes the movie kind of be weird. Yeah. It's weird they do that with friends over here, and it's never, like... Or very rarely is it things that are cut because they're kind of risque. It is, again, it's usually for time, but in a really ham-fisted way. But, yeah, I don't know why they do it. It's odd. BBC America does that too when I watch like a really long Doctor Who episode and they don't want to show the whole thing. They'll just like cut out really terrible like moments. And it's like, well, now the episode doesn't make sense as much. So thank you. Should we get back to more crazy animes? Do it. Caitlin, at some point I want to talk about Doctor Who with you because I didn't know you were a Doctor Who fan. I would love to. That would make me very happy. I love Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. Sorry. Nerds. <laughs> yeah, big nerds, big giant nerds. I'm just messing. <laughs> I am a nerd. 
Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how how weird a shoujo series can get, which... What is shoujo? Shoujo, shoujo sh- series are series that are written with a female audience in mind. Okay. Oh. Like, the opposite of that is shonen series, which would be like Dragon Ball, Naruto, oh, okay. One Piece, stuff like that that's written with, like, young boys, like, young males in mind. So it's, like, super awesome fights. Yeah, and yeah. Really dumb stuff and stuff like that. So, shoujo series are ones that have girls as the main character that are surrounded by a bunch of boys. Oh, so like, uh... There's... Oh my... Fuck! I just had the name in my head! Shit! It was, uh, this girl goes to, like, this prep school, and it's all these guys, and she has to dress Oran. up as a guy to hang out with them, and there's, like, a blonde... Oran Hills Club. Oran, yeah, Oran, yeah. Yeah. Oran Hills Club is one of the greatest series of all time. I love that I show I saw so the much. first episode. It was okay. I love that series. It's really, really good. You should watch the rest that's of a, it. That's, that's a good example of, uh, show, what you said, right? Yeah, shoujo. shoujo. Yeah. Okay. In- it's very shoujo, very flowery, yeah. very... There's, that, like, that, that certain art styles where you can that tell... That was literally flowery, because whenever they show the blonde guy, there's always sparkling roses in the background. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I, I, I can almost say it's, like, a parody of shoujo. Yeah. Because it's very over-the-top with its yeah. visuals like that. Are the guys in shoujo... Are the guys in shoujo always, like, massive weeboos, or, like, really, like... Weeboos? Oh, no, they're very pretty. They're very, yeah. very pretty. Yeah. But you get, you get, like, the stereotypes of, like, the kinds of girls that, like, tween age, or the kinds of guys that tween age girls go for. So, like, either the really, really awkward guy or the really good-looking brooding guy, or, like, do they have all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are the tropes. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that, the the okay. really, there's, like, the really pretty one, like in, like, an Oron Host Club, the, all their stereotype the, all the guys are tropes. Mm-hmm. So you have, like, the main guy who's, like, really pretty and really full of himself. And knows that he's really pretty, and he's like a ladies' man. You have that guy, and you have the glasses character, who's like really logical and methodical and stuff. And then you have like the cute Shota boy character, who's like looks like he's like five years old. <laughs> 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 he's actually, and he's super cute, like yeah, like super cute, and very very like uh, very energetic. That's like a Shota boy character. And then you have the one that never talks, like the really quiet strong, brooding yeah, one. For, he really doesn't like do much except sit in the corner and brood yeah. and never say anything. Like literally in Oran Host Club, there's a character with like literally no dialogue. <laughs> it's easier to draw that way. <laughs> yeah, and in in Oran, this is why I say it's a parody because there there are these twins that are in the show. Who were like act very incestuous with each other, um, oh. for to get like it's part of the whole plot. I'm, this isn't the one I was gonna explain, but Oran Host Club is about a girl who goes to this rich rich school, even though she's like super poor, but she got a scholarship because she's really smart, and she like has her hair cut all short and stuff like that. So when she goes into this rich rich host club, which in in Japan a host club. Is a, it's a cultural thing where women will go to a place and get, like, served by really good-looking men, like, and get doted on by them and stuff like that. That sounds amazing. It's Why pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. I don't know. <laughs> like, they'll go to these house clubs and get, like, served food by men, and they'll talk to these men, like, and these men will pretty much pretend to care about <laughs> them. And... Like, like, dote on them and stuff like that. So this is one. For, <laughs> this would never happen, but there's one in this really preppy, rich high school. And uh, so she goes there. She accidentally breaks a vase, and now she has to like be a part of the hose club to, uh, uh, pay to pay off the vase, even though she's a girl. And they don't find out she's a girl till like the end of episode one. They're like, I didn't know you were a girl. Shit. Bah, bah, bah. So now she has to pretend. To- she has to be a part of this host club and pretend to be a boy. What? And, uh... Kind of a cool idea. So she's, like... She's the trope when she is acting like a boy. She's, like, the really homely, sweet one. 
that's also a trope. So, uh, and then you have these, and, and they'll, they'll each, like, present their trope to the girl, and that's why, like, certain girls like them. So these twins will be very, like, incestuous with each other. <laughs> And like, like, put like, really act like this. <laughs> I can't put it any other way except like they get like super touchy and gay with each other. No, I know, I and know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> Lannister syndrome. <laughs> Pretty much. No, it's seriously like they're all over each other. It's awesome. Anyway, you should watch Oran Host Club because it's really funny. It's a rom com. And it's probably the funniest rom-com out there, because these days you can't really do romantic comedy, like, that well. Like, once Oron Host Club did it, there's, like, one series I'm watching right now who's, like, doing it just as good as Oron Host Club did. And I'm so happy that I finally found, like, a really good rom-com. So, but anyway, that's, like, the best shoujo series of all time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's for kids. No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, yeah, that sounds very, like, potential. I was about to say, Fran, don't act like that. Not every cartoon is for kids. I, this one was probably for, like, tweens, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I got that... into... I got into Oron Host Club when I was, like, 14. No, okay, well, tweens, kids, like, what? Like that's what I meant. Like, that's kind of surprising, because it sounds sort of near the mark for tweens. There... It... Yeah, it's... It was made... Shoujo, again, it's made for, like, a, a, a more female audience. Yeah. So, like, young... Young Japanese teenage girls who are really into that stuff. Are the incestuous twins anything like? So okay, on Britain's Got Talent, um, which I assume you have an American version of that, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so there were these twins on Britain's Got Talent, um, called Jeremy and Edward. They were Irish, um, and they're like name. I know who. Yeah, Jedward. Jedward. Yeah. They are like Jedward. They super are like Jedward. That Jedward are Jedward are so creepy. When they were on Celebrity Big Brother, and they're like twenty two at the time, they had a bath together. Like, ew. The weirdest thing I have ever seen in my goddamn life. Um, yeah. Hikaru and Kaoru from our own host club are absolutely Jedward. <laughs> I instantly thought of that, you know, that's awesome. So anyway, the one I, the series I was gonna explain, because this is this series is like one of the quintessential shoujo we series. Got two for the price of one, so I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> this is called Fruits Basket. Oh yeah, Fruits I, Basket. Had best, I was an extra in uh Jason Otaku's uh, radio drama. Oh yeah. Do you know anything about Fruits Basket? Yes, I do. Fruits Basket. I never watched it. Is it Fruits Basket? Fruits Basket starts out a little weird. What were we all saying? I'm oh, sorry. Is it like Fruits Basket? Like fruit? Or is it like something else? Fruits. Oh, no. Fruits Basket. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it starts out with a girl living in a tent, right? For some reason, this high school girl, like, like her, I think it was like her mom died in a car yeah. crash. So she lives with, like, her her grandfather, but she gets kicked out or something, so she's, like, living I in a tent. I think she just chooses to leave, because he's, like, no, I, yeah, like, he's, he's kind of out of it, and, like, other relatives don't want her around, I think. Yeah, so she, she comes upon this home while she's living in this tent uh, that her classmates live in, and it's this family called the Somas, and there's 12 members of this family... And they're all possessed by a spirit of the Chinese Zodiac, and they turn into one of the Zodiac animals when they're, like, hugged by someone of the opposite gender, or they get embarrassed or something. So, like, the main guy turns into a cat. Huh. Okay. And there's another guy that turns into, like, a sheep. And another guy that turns into a dog. Oh, yep. alright. Okay. Yeah. I'll go with that. And it's pretty much just, like, her being friends with these people, and, like, uh, she finds out their secret, so now she, like, lives with them, and the whole series is, like, about them, like, trying to, like, find the break, like, break the curse and stuff like that. <laughs> but, yeah. That's so awkward. <laughs> Fruits Basket's pretty. I, I remember, I remember liking it. I don't remember finishing it. That's the weird thing. That's, not, that's a weird <laughs> idea. Like, the weirdest thing about that is, it's like that they're they when they're hugged by people of the opposite sex. So do you mean do, basically do you mean like any time they're sort of 
generally feeling awkward or nervous or like emotional yeah. that's when they turn into this like spirit of whichever zodiac sign they are well yeah no they just like straight up turn into the animal like the main guy turns into f- a fucking cat <laughs> not not the spirit of a cat he f- yeah. fucking turns into a cat yeah. <laughs> like how does he does he have to like not stop feeling awkward to get out of the cat form is he just there until whenever like, how does he get changed back you know to his what? Season? I don't remember. I can't remember either. <laughs> you were in it, and you like, can't remember. I think it's like they they change, and then they're like that for a little while, but... It, not, yeah, not, but then when they turn back, they're, like, naked yeah, or something. It's only temporary. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like kind of a fun idea. I mean, it doesn't sound that weird. I remember really liking Fruits yeah, Basket, I, by I, the way. I like, enjoyed being <laughs> on the, the episodes, and, like, the story was pretty cool. I was looking forward to, like, doing other stuff, but then it just fizzled through. But I enjoyed yeah, it, my kind of, it just kind of stopped happening, the radio drama, didn't it? Yeah, she, and then she just stopped making stuff all together. So, I don't know. Uh, was there any, like, I mean, in terms of the creators of the TV version, like, I mean, did they know anything about the radio drama, or...? I have no idea. I probably not. <laughs> it was yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty unofficial, wasn't it? Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to hear I, it though, and I would like to watch it. Yeah, I was in a a good third of the ep- of uh all the of the epi- of all the stuff altogether. Like, who did you play? Not, like twenty something episodes. So yeah, I I did background stuff once in a while. It was fun. <laughs> oh, that does sound fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my contribution to Channel Awesome, or it was. <laughs> well, I was in a Welshy video, so I, I'm officially I, I'm officially a former member of Channel Awesome. Oh, oh my god, I love Welshy. I really miss his videos. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I really like Matt. He's a really nice bloke. I Yeah, got a lot of time for Matt. He's a cool guy. Hi, mm-hmm. Matt. He, he told me that, like, he wants to do stuff with Panda, but I don't know if any of that's happening. No, they, no. they are. They're writing, a new, um, they're writing a new Panda Q&A. Really? Yeah. You just made my day. I'm so happy. I would... Oh, I'm so I'm glad. I'm a huge... Like, I'm still a fangirl of his, and he, like, he like re- you know, stopped, like, three years ago. I'm not over it. Which I'm happy with, no, like, he moved on, but I'm still, like, ah. I mean, I mean yeah, they... But- Say that, but that was a while ago, so I don't I don't know what's happening with it. I, I want it to happen too. They but... just like they just very very recently, like within the week, said that they're doing a new one and in the process of writing it. Three. Well, if you need any cameos, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, like his stuff I really liked because he didn't try and emulate any kind of angry reviewer stuff, and he really talked in depth about the shows that he liked. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from watching his stuff, and it was always really funny. So anyway, back to Fruits Basket, I guess. Or what other anime do you want to talk? About? Yep. Well, no, I was done talking about Can Fruits I Basket. Know? I was gonna talk about. I was gonna talk about one that's like a little more adult. Oh. And this one's like not like super weird, but I feel like right, if you run out, I have an idea. For this one. is you... like this one's like one of like the quintessential ones that people need to watch. By the way. Like, super quintessential. Full, Full Metal Alchemist is one of the greatest series of all time. I have a friend who would beg to differ that. <laughs> uh, Full Metal Alchemist is really good. Why? Full Metal Alchemist oh, is good! My friend Doug just always hated it. I think he tried... Why? He tried to watch it and he just didn't like it. I don't know why. Well, you can't hate it if you haven't fucking I seen it. I don't know. We talked about this years ago. I don't remember. Did they watch the original show or did they watch Brotherhood? Because Brotherhood's supposed to be way uh, better. I... Think the original? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is supposed to be like way better from what I've from what people. I watched I watched the original series. I haven't I, I haven't seen much of Brotherhood, but I've been told that Brotherhood is like really really good. Anyway, I was talking about Full Metal Alchemist is a series that uh had a manga, had a fifty two episode anime, and then had a uh, had a, had, like, a reboot, which followed the manga more closely, because the original series did not follow it closely, uh, from what I've been told, because I didn't read the manga either, (laughs) so, um, it follows the original, I'll talk about, hmm, which one should I talk about, I guess, they're both kind of the same, 
Uh, why don't you go in order, I guess? Not that you did Okay, stuff or so, quite. the original, like, I think, like, the first half follows the manga, and then the plot kind of deviates toward the middle, so around, like, episode 30-ish. Okay. So, yeah, how long did it run? I don't even know. I think it was, like, 52, 51, 51 episodes. I looked it up. 51 episodes is the original show. Um, so, uh, there are these two brothers, Edward and Alphonse, and they're searching for a Philosopher's Stone, Wait, so really? they can, uh... They're searching what? for the Philosopher's Stone, like Harry Potter? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a literal, like, Philosopher's Stone, which is used in a lot of things, and this is, like, one of the things that it's That's used funny. in. Why, did they, why um, did they change it to the Sorcerer's Stone in the American you wouldn't know what a philosopher is, apparently, because kids are too stupid. Or, like, because it has to do, it has to do with, like, uh, the the actual Philosopher's Stone, which is a real, it it's, like, a real legend. It's It has to do with, uh, like, alchemy. I thought it was just because Sorcerer's Stone sounds cooler. <laughs> That's what I thought uh, too. I, I yeah, it's like uh, what is it's it called? It's like not giving American kids enough credit. It's really annoying to me. Like I American agree. kids are just as smart as British kids. Like they could totally figure uh, out. Maybe. Like, <laughs> I'm sure they could. They could look it up, couldn't they? If they were interested. Like I don't think it. Yeah, look it up. up. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. think so too. So anyway, the Philosopher's Stone is very like uh, quintessential in this in this series because. When when Edward and Alphonse were kids, uh, their mom died, and they used alchemy to try to bring their dead mom back yeah. to life, and uh, yeah. that didn't work out very well. That that didn't work out good. at they all. They would have had like a zombie mom. That would have yeah. been amazing. And in the process, in the process, uh, Edward lost his arm, and Alphonse lost his entire body. What? So oh my God. he lost his so, entire body. So what is he now? So Edward has a metal arm, and Alphonse, his soul, with alchemy, they transferred his soul into, like, this huge suit of armor. So he's, like, the <laughs> little brother who has, like, this squeaky voice, but he's in, like, a huge suit of oh, armor. awesome. <laughs> but, like, there, he, there's no one actually, like, it's his soul, like, that's his body now until they can get his actual body back. Well, why would you want your body back when you can just be a giant robot? <laughs> Because it's very, like, you know, not, it's not, like, not ethical. Like, if you had a full suit of armor, like, that's very, like, hard to walk in and hard to be yeah, in. Yeah, no like, you know? What if he wanted to, what if he wanted to have sex? What if he wanted to, like... Well, he's, like, like, eight in this, so... <laughs> yeah, well... Not I eight, he's, like, friend. 12 or some shit. <laughs> in the but... future, when he wants to have sex and play basketball and Twister... And, you know, like, all the cat. Go to college. And learn how to, to play doctor. basketball, pretty much. <laughs> and go to college and, like, bend his knees. He's going to wish a suit of armor. I'm and just saying. And become a beautiful yeah. ballerina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a giant suit of armor doing ballet makes me really happy. Just Someone needs yeah. to on that. So, so they're like traveling around. This whole series is them traveling around, uh, trying to find a way to bring their mother's their mother back to life with alchemy. But it's called human transmutation, and it's like super like taboo. Like it's it's almost impossible to to have like a successful transmutation yeah, yeah. because what is it like? Oh god, what is like the saying that they have in that show? I forgot it. Where it's like there's like a <coughs> You have to like I forget like that I'm trying to remember the fucking phrase that they Look use in the show. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Equivalent exchange. Yeah, in in order the whole show is based around this idea of equivalent exchange, which is the practice in alchemy of, like, like, in order to obtain or create something, uh, something of equal value must be lost or destroyed. So the whole series is based around okay. that concept. <laughs> so human transmutation is also based around that concept. So there, his body's completely gone, and Ed loses his arm and leg, 
And, and as a uh, result of that, do they get their mum back? Oh, no, no. That's just the beginning of the show. And then the whole show is them trying to find the Philosopher's Stone in order well, to, like, do it hard. Oh. have do that without human, like, do it without, like, equivalent exchange? I think, I have but not surely, watched the show Surely the equivalent <laughs> exchange has already happened. They've lost, one of them's lost an arm and the other one's lost his body, so well, that's the other arm. But they oh, did it, and okay. it was failed. That's now, yeah. <laughs> but they're they're trying to discover the nature of this like philosopher's stone, and but there's like a government conspiracy <laughs> hiding the true nature of it that like involves these people <laughs> called homunculi. <laughs> and like there's just they throw like the dad in there because the dad was an alchemist and uh like he abandoned them when they were when they were children. It's a raw deal, though. It's a raw deal that they lose their shit and still quite literally lose their shit and they don't get their mum back. I feel like if it doesn't work, they should get their body back. Yeah, the whole the whole series, if you wouldn't watch, I, I've been told Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the way to go because it follows the story. Um, but also, Fran, if they got all their stuff and, you know, lived happily ever after, then it'd be over, right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe I could just put them, like... I don't know, like mowing the lawn or something. I need, I need to go back and watch. I, I need to watch Brotherhood, because I've seen the original show. I've seen most of the original show, because um, I remember when it was airing on television. I haven't, I haven't watched Brotherhood at all. But my friends are like, "Watch Brotherhood. What are you doing? Watch Full Alchemist Brotherhood." I'm like, uh, okay, I will. Fun show. It is. It is. It is a really fun. It's. It's. It's also very, very sad. Like. There is stuff that happens in that show that will fucking destroy you. Yes, that's what I like. We'll watch Full Mouth with Brotherhood because there's a lot of that. <laughs> you masochist, you. There is a lot of like, really... I get sadder in the beginning. Really good characters getting murdered in terrible ways. <laughs> oh, so it's Game of Thrones, the anime. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I've seen, like, the episode of Eight Simple Rules where the dad dies. I swear to God, I've seen it about ten times. Like, I do just, like, eat that shit up. It's so bad. Yeah. Like, I'd show you, I'd show you, like, one of the most infamous death scenes in the series, but I don't want to ruin it in case you two decide to watch it. Um, I'm not, I'm probably not going to check it out. No, I was talking to Fran. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, Ooh, Georgia. I to Fran, excuse me. <laughs> Georgia. I see how Also, is. also, I see so many people, actually, on, like, Reddit and stuff that are like, I watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and now I want to watch more anime. It seems like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is today's gateway show. It's either that or... Or Sword Art, Sword Art Online or Attack on Titan. Like, those are, like, the big three that people will watch to get into anime, and that. then they want to watch more. I could definitely see that. Especially Attack on Titan. Everyone's freaking out about Attack on Titan. I'm waiting for that season two, though. I've Joe, read the manga. I'm Joe, terrible. <laughs> Joe watched the show, um, and he said it, he said it was all right. I, I think I caught a little, like, Brief, very briefly. You can't but, catch it briefly. You have to watch it all. <laughs> well, I say briefly because I would come home and he would be already like halfway through an episode. So, but yeah, I could check it out. It's good. It's but, good. Uh, are see they, people that are like, oh, it's so overrated. People in the anime, like, like huge weebs, like don't really like it that much. Or like, uh, it's once an anime gets popular, people don't like it. That's like the whole mindset of an anime fan, like. Once some once a series like Attack on Titan gets like super popular and super mainstream, no one likes it anymore. <laughs> even though it's really well animated. Are they really still well doing a live action movie? Huh? I keep I kept hearing about the rumor of a live action movie. Well, I don't it's know. It's happening. I mean, it's out it's there. It was made and it was shown, and it was supposed to be pretty good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, I just know I just about it because everyone was like, oh my god, it's going to be awesome. Did you guys see the trailer? Ah! <laughs> Apparently it was pretty awesome from what I heard. Does anyone else really hate that thing, though, of like, we can't like this anymore because oh everyone god. else Anime, likes it? Nerds are the worst at it, I feel like. They are. They definitely, not no one else does it more than nerds. They're like, oh man, Game of yeah. Thrones is super popular now. I can't like it. 
That's why I say, and, fuck them. You like whatever you like, and you don't like whatever you don't like. Who cares? I feel like yeah. the only thing that's yeah. happened with in, like, recent memory is, like, Breaking Bad got super popular, but everyone still liked Breaking Bad. Like, I haven't heard really anyone that said, like, they didn't like Breaking Bad, or they don't like it anymore because it's super popular. I mean, it's dumb, because what the implication is, is that if everyone else likes this, and everyone else is stupid, which is secretly what I think, then this thing that I like must be stupid, Mm -hmm. and therefore I have to pretend not to like it anymore. And it's just so it makes you... You're essentially saying, I'm a huge elitist douchebag, and I believe that I'm better than everyone, to the extent that I'll stop liking something that I actually do like. I mean, it's just, it's cunty. Welcome to being an anime fan, by the way. Welcome to the past (laughs) ten years of my life. It is obnoxious, though. Being an anime fan on the internet. (laughs) I can't go on the anime subreddit, the R anime subreddit, and talk about One Piece. Because they hate One Piece. (laughs) Because it's oh, a shonen, and... it's a popular shonen series. And they don't like any of Georgia. those, because it's popular. Georgia. You're doing like a, um, on a slightly different tack, you're doing a, what is it you said? You're doing this summer of horror movies things oh, with yeah, Joe. Yeah. I want to hear um, this is actually, this is like a tradition Joe did with him, he used to do with himself, where he would try to watch 100 horror movies before Halloween. And uh, I think he's done it by himself successfully, but last year... We did it ourselves, and we got to, like, 50-something, because we started in August. But this year, we're taking it to a little much further. We started in May, and we're already at, like, 60. Wow! So just, yeah, so at this point, we're trying to see how much farther we can get for Halloween. But it's it's really fun. It's just, like, because we have, like, a fuck ton of DVDs just lying around, and most of them are horror. It's stuff we've been meaning to watch, so we try to use those... Or just we have Netflix Instant Watch or just On Demand. There's like so there's so much to choose from and to use. So it's like there's no way we can run out of things. And it's like... That's the wonderful thing about horror. There is so much of it and it's so diverse. Yeah, yeah. And we decided that like, you know, even if there's one we already saw last year or we've seen already in general, we are going to use it anyway on the list just to help with the numbers. So that's that's been a big help. So we've been like... Showing each other, like, you know, like, I showed him a movie I saw that he hadn't seen, and then he showed me a movie he saw that I hadn't seen. So we've been showing each other movies, or watching movies together that we, neither of us had seen, or stuff that we both seen and really liked. It's been, it's been really fun. I mean, I really like doing that, like... Sometimes I'll make the effort just to have a day where I watch a movie that I haven't seen, and usually it'll be a horror movie. I mean, what, like, what would you say, like... What's what the best, most unexpected thing you've seen so far? Like, something that you hadn't heard of, you knew nothing about, that really impressed you? Oh, shit. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that's been like that this year. But um, last year, we watched, like, a bunch of different things. He showed me uh, The People Under the Stairs, and I loved that. I wasn't expecting to like that, but that was really good. Um, I think we watched Session 9 last year, and Session, I'm like, I think I'm obsessed with Session 9 right now, because that, Nine, I've never that, heard like, of. that, like, blew my socks off into next week. It was so fucking amazing, and so horribly underrated. Like, seriously, if anybody takes anything out of this podcast, just go watch Session 9. It's so good. <laughs> wow, I've never even heard of it. I'm definitely gonna have to check it out. The that's people the, under the stairs, that's the one with the two guys from Twin Peaks, isn't yeah, it? Isn't yeah, yeah. And that kid that's that movie. their house. That's an amazing movie. I've seen that movie. It's fucking yeah. fun. I, it was I like fun. that movie. I don't <laughs> um, anything this year that, like, really blew me I'm, like, trying to remember now because we've already seen so much. But, um, yeah, I, I guess just Session 9 because it was so... Just so amazing. <laughs> and and plus, that movie also includes one of the best fuck yous ever uttered. Oh, wow. Like the Is way it he the... does it. He's, it's, well, first of all, it's David Caruso, <laughs> which Ugh. is already hilarious. But then it's like, it like cuts to him, and then it kind of zooms in. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> or something. Just the way he says it is like, I don't think I do it justice, but it's, it's just really funny. <laughs> 
It, there should be a top 100 fuck yous or something of that description on YouTube. That would oh make me really god, happy. Oh my god, that would be so amazing. There has to be something like that out there. I can't believe that there couldn't be. Um, One that you should see, because one of the things, like I was saying about, you know, horror being so kind of diverse and there being so much of it, like, can't possibly run out. Um, There's this one I saw this summer called Wake and Fright. It's just an example of something like... You know, it doesn't fit what your average layman would think of as a horror movie. Kind of like something like The Wicker Man doesn't, but I absolutely see it as one. Like, it's well, set in the Australian it? Wake in Fright. Wake in Fright, okay. It's Australian. It's um, I give too much away, but it's about this teacher that has this kind of massive bender in the Australian outback for, like, three days. Like, oh, okay. and it, it's a horrible, horrible film. Um. I'm trying to remember. It's got a re- really well-known person in it, but I forget his name. Um, I'm but actually, yeah, like I'm actually, I'm on Netflix right now, and I'm uh, I found that movie, and I was gonna talk about another one, but I, I think you're talking about Donald Pleasance. They're listing him as the lead. Yeah, Donald Pleasance. So I was actually, since I'm on Netflix, I was looking at uh, my old shipping activity, and I had almost forgotten about this one movie. And actually, a couple of movies that have blown me away, it looks like they were in uh, January. Uh, one of them okay. was, uh, so when we weren't even doing the marathon, but it, they're still really good. So this one, Dead Ringers, you ever heard of it? I've heard of it, yeah. I don't know anything about it, though. All right, so Dead Ringers, first of all, I think it's officially uh, my favorite, might be, might be my favorite Cronenberg movie. But it's essentially oh, wow. about... Okay, so it's basically like, yeah, Jeremy Iron plays these uh, set of twins, and um, it's kind of like, at first you think it's about them, and like, they kind of play sex games with like, this oh, one wow. woman, so you, you think it's going to be about like, their relationship with this one woman and how that goes, but then it's like, it's more about the twins' relationship and how like, one's kind of mentally superior over the other one, and the other one kind of, they both kind of deteriorate more and more, and it's, it's fascinating for some reason. I don't know why, but it's just. I mean, you said Jeremy yeah, Irons. Yeah, I, I think that. Yeah, obviously that's. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch any movie with Jeremy Irons having sex. I mean, Jeremy Irons playing twins as well. Like that's a pretty alluring thought. I mean, yeah, like David Cronenberg, though. Like he's also really good in that. Like you don't really first. Of, actually, the thing about that movie is that it's hard to tell which. 20s playing and they do it deliberately because sometimes they wear the same clothes or they're like they don't address the you know the, the person by name so you have to remember is he this one or the other one and then when they're like in the same room there's like one scene near the end where they're in the same room together and they're wearing the same outfit and I'm like oh come on <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like an interesting movie though like I need to see more David Cronenberg and it feels oh like Jeremy that is the sort of thing Jeremy Irons could do really well. It actually just got a Criterion release, so if you get a chance, check it oh, out. Oh, I love the Criterion collection. I love it yeah. so much. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... I want to mention one other movie, though, before I uh, finish my Netflix uh, rant. This is another... Like, like I said, I'm looking at my uh, old shipping activity, and this one, I guess, I saw it looks like in uh, November, December. This one is called Chained. This one is... Really, it's very, it's kind, it's very intense. It's actually, um, apparently David Lynch has a daughter, Jennifer Chambers Lynch, who's also a director. And yeah, she, I wrote the Diary of Laura Palmer, the one that actually got released. It's meant to be brilliant. Wait, that that's come out yet, or the book? Oh no, the Di- Diary of Laura Palmer came out in the nineties. It's meant to be fantastic. Oh. oh, okay, never mind. But, um, yeah, she made this movie called Chain. It's literally just, like, one day this kid gets kidnapped by this guy who yeah. came up to the house and just keeps him there with him. And it's just, like, their relationship as he gets older and, like, how this guy treats him and the kid gets kind of twisted. And it's so, like, it's so dark and kind of depressing. But, like... Also, with yeah, the same as Dead Ringers, they both have just like twist endings that will just like knock you out. But I, mean, I have to say, like, I find things like I I have a pretty strong stomach for horror, like of any kind, you know, whether it's gore or psychological, like yeah, you know, because again, there is so much out there and it is all so different. But I do yeah. find stuff I find stuff about kids getting hurt very very hard to watch. Yeah, this one is like I mean, he doesn't. 
it's not like the kid gets like you know beaten to death or anything. It's just like he's stuck at this house that's like in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, in a way, though, that... this guy who kind of who kind of raises him in a weird way, and it's just, oh, it's so creepy. And also because yeah. the guy like Vincent D'Onofrio with like this weird voice and his big pudgy belly. <laughs> It's just, it's really, really good. It sounds amazing. That kind of thing does fuck me up, though, but it sounds amazing. Yeah, I think maybe um, it. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I would like, I think I could handle it. I would like to see that movie. Um, I mean, in a way, I find things that are like, things that where kids are psychologically damaged, in a way, I find that kind of harder to watch. Like, kidnap, oh, yeah. people. Just... Kid- kidnap and people being trapped, I really find difficult to stomach but yeah, yeah. In a way, the fact that those things exist in horror i find sort of therapeutic does that make any sense i know it kind of does i mean that's i uh i heard this like uh there, it was on the bravo's like scary movie list i told you about that i love so much and they talked to this one woman and she was like horror movies are about containing your fear because like you watch the movie you know you conquer your fear and then you go home because you can just turn it off yeah. and she's yeah. right that kind of is what it is She's right. She's completely right. I think, you know, it. it is, it's kind of cathartic. You, you know, you, you release those feelings in a safe place. Yeah. You confront them by seeing and hearing what it is, and then you, you know, you're like, oh, this, this is just, you know, fiction, and then you turn it off and go about your day. And it can be fun, because I think any strong feeling, to a certain extent, are fun, even sadness, and, I mean, you know, that's why, why do you think people watch Doctor Who? Because they like being sad. <laughs> did you guys want to segue into Wes oh, Craven yeah, real yeah. quick um, as we're recording this the night before he had passed of brain cancer and we were all very sad about it I, I didn't even know he was suffering it was so sudden yeah no I I had no idea I literally him passing away was the first I heard of him having yeah, brain like cancer it's... His, his friends family and, and the horror community in large because everyone's mourning right now yeah, that's thing, like Freddie Freddy and uh, and you know Freddie art of him at a gravestone and stuff like that. People are really sad about it. I mean, he he was such an amazing guy, like, and so prolific, you know, for so long. Um, and just yeah, just you know, kind of had everything. Was capable of being so creative and capable of scaring people so much, but also being so clever and so funny. And, and he had a lovely speaking voice. Yeah, had, he did have a lovely speaking voice. <laughs> and he managed like, to... Oh, sorry, go on. No, I was just saying, because I've heard him in interviews, so that's how I know. <laughs> oh, Yeah, I mean, he... Not just because you've been hanging out at his house. <laughs> Who told you? <laughs> sorry. Well, Wes told me hang out there, too. Um, but yeah it's it's really it's really really sad um i mean 76 is you know still relatively young and i think particularly with the scream series like even though he wasn't working on that like i've heard very good things and it's a shame that he's not going to be around to see its conclusion um yeah yeah. and and now i'm hearing they want to like I think at, po- at this point, what I saw was, like, a petition, so I don't know if this is even happening, but they want to, like, remake Nightmare on Elm Street again with somebody else. Yeah, because online petitions always work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to do that. I don't that. mean to be mean, but that's just the no, way the no, world no. works. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, well, it... I don't even know if this is happening or not, so who knows. <laughs> you wouldn't want that to happen, though, would you? Um, I don't know. Because they, they, uh, the person they, that the petition I picked was Doug Jones, and he's a, actually, I had to look up who he was because I didn't know. He's actually, he's more of like, like an Andy Circus guy, kind of physical actor. Like, he was, um, he does, like, Guillermo del Toro movies. Like, he was the fawn, yeah, the, I, the blue guy in Hellboy. So he does, like, I love, stuff. I love Doug Jones. He was also, um, one of the gentlemen in that really frightening Buffy episode, Hush, um, which I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming a lot of you guys have seen, um, I mean, he, he's a great performer, and he's a great actor, I think he's definitely more than just, you know, like, the body stuff he does is incredible, but he's, I mean, you know, they're not just kind of, it isn't just the body, like, it is, you know, he's putting his whole soul into those performances, um, like, 
yeah, like Andy Circus, very much like Andy Circus. Yeah, and I think yeah. those are the people that succeed doing those kinds of things. Um, I mean, I don't know whether I see him as Freddy Krueger, though. And I just sort of feel like I, I don't see it as a movie. I mean, maybe it is a movie you could remake. Mary, maybe there is more to bring to the table, but I just can't see it being done without it being a money grab. Well, of course it's going to be a money grab, regardless of what happens. <laughs> I think it's possible to I think it's possible to make something and have it more be more about bringing something new to the table. Nah. Um, it, no, I think it is. I think if if it was someone that really it's like I remember when they were going to remake The Wicker Man and Mark Commode, who's a really respected film critic, heard that Neil LeBute was doing it and he was like, oh, this is really exciting, you know, and it ended up being terrible. But someone like Neil LeBute, if he had made better film that could have been a really interesting movie and it could have brought more to the table for that story so it is possible it just hasn't been done successfully thus far honestly like i know what i just said before was like i was being sarcastic but like honestly i would have i would agree with you that like you know they are just in it for the money and like there should be people who want to like put more into it but i might have i i think i have an example to Sight for that. Wait, you know what? I'm not even making any sense right now, am I? <laughs> All right, let me start over. <laughs> I, there is such a thing as a remake that's almost as good as the original in the horror community. I have seen it. It is the Maniac remake with Elijah Wood. Huh. Oh, I've never holy, even heard of it. Holy shit. Like, <laughs> like Maniac... It's never, Maniac has never been my, like, favorite horror movie of all time. It has its flaws. You know, I can see that. It it does get slow at points, and so does this one, but, like, oh, my God. Like, first of all, Elijah Wood, as, like, being another crazy, awkward psycho killer, he's absolutely mind-blowing and so good and, and like, sympathetic, too. It's more of, like, a sympathetic portrayal of this guy because you kind of get more into his head. In fact, actually, the entire movie is shot from his perspective. Everything. I mean... Elijah Wood is really good at horror. He is scary in Sin City. He does very he little. He's terrifying in Sin City. And he doesn't even speak. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly, exactly. What little kind of work he does in Sin City is very, very memorable. Um, oh, scary. So I'd, I'd be really interested to see that movie, Georgia. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, from the first kill, I, I don't think I'll ever forget the first kill just because of, like... It's so, like, abrupt and shocking, and I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> and that just, like, sucked me in right there from the get-go. And I loved it. Like, it's all, like I said, it's all shot from his perspective. So, like, you don't really see him that much, but occasionally they'll, like, show his reflection in a mirror. Or, like, he'll be talking to somebody, and you'll see, like, his reflection in a window in the background. So it's like you're peering in through his life. You're peering in through his conversations and his thoughts. And, like, exactly. all the anguish he has over his mother and stuff like that. And then he gets, like, flashes of the past with his mother being horrible and it's it's so it's so good it was so much better than i expected that you know what shit that's actually a movie we watched for the hundred of the horror movies so that's one that blew me away that i forgot to mention oh okay and that was this year was it yeah that was uh, a few months ago i'd say so let me see critical reaction. Um, yeah. Oh, it's had good reviews. Front row, front row reviews, which is a really good um, English uh, radio segment, um, calls it one of the strongest and most beautiful classic horror stories of our generation. Visually and audibly stunning. It is. It's like, it's like, it's like when I heard about this. I mean, I, I was kind of happy with Elijah Wood because Elijah Wood's a great actor, but like. I figured it was going to be like all the other ones, you know, just soulless cash cows. But it wasn't. The person who made this, you could tell that, like, they wanted to do something more with this character. Because, like, in the original, you don't know much about the killer. And that's kind of cool. But this one, like, it seems with horror remakes, people want to, like, take the killer and give you, like, every single thing they could put in a backstory. Like, you know, their favorite color. But this is, like... But this is, like, it's still kind of that, but not so much that you're, like, nauseated. Like, you get the sense that his mother was, like, a crazy person, but it's not there all the time. You know, once in a while he'll have, like, a vision of you know, his mother being horrible, but it's not all the time. You know, he gives you a chance to do other things and breathe. So it's, like, it's a good mix of both. It was just, it was so impressive. 
Yeah, I mean, I I think like I I think it is possible. Like that's a really really good example. Like right there, like you know, you're bringing you're bringing more to the table, but you're also you're appreciating what people. Because the thing is, like you know, to a certain extent, like yes, you want to know a little bit about the about the villain. Yeah, yeah. But you, but, but you also you just kind of want to see them being. You kind of want to see them being a bad guy, badass. You just yeah, kind of want yeah. to see them being, you know. You want to you want to see them existing in the world that they currently exist in, and in the world that the movie currently exists in, not you know the world that they inhabit like thirty years ago. Like if you want to do that, and make a separate movie. Like, and right. I I think for for a remake to get that, I think is really smart you know i think that immediately for a horror remake set you know separates it um yeah yeah this was so i don't know i don't think this was released to theaters i think this was probably like direct to dvd but it was it's so good it's so like so unexpectedly good (laughs) it's a shame it was direct to dvd that's a shame because people have a real like people have a real kind of thing against that um it's like a Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, they made a really beautiful film and they were still good called um, Cemetery Junction. Um, And it came out in cinemas over here, but it only got a DVD release in the US. And I think that's a shame. That's a beautiful movie, but... All right. Well, we should wrap up. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Kind of stole the podcast from you, Greer, but whatever. No, no, it's good. No, I'm glad. No, I'm sorry. no, it was interesting. I'm glad we talked about horror. Um, yeah. yeah okay. Getting back to Wes Craven quickly, I want to kind of wrap the res- Wes Craven up. Um, okay. Yeah, it's really, really, it's really sad that we. I fucking love Nightmare on Elm Street. That's so. one of the greatest horror movies I've ever seen. It still stands up. I love that movie. It's a, it's probably my favorite slasher movie. I mean, the original. He just yeah, he was consistently surprising and. Um, seemed like a wonderful talent and a wonderful human being. And yeah. It's Does devastating. Remember he made, like, a Meryl Streep movie once about, like, kids who were, like, trying to, uh... What, wasn't it... I, it was, wasn't it like she was a music teacher and she was trying to teach all these, like, you know, privileged kids how to play the violin? I haven't heard of that. That sounds very un Craven. I think he did in, like, the 90s, as I saw it with my mom. It was Wow. It wasn't bad. It was just, it was just, it was more trite than anything else. It's like the cliche, you know, we can't teach these kids anything. They're all bad, you know. Well, we have to give them a chance. Think of the music. <laughs> that was but fine. Kids to again. Yeah, yeah. It was fine for what it was, if I recall. I mean, I, I, I might be thinking of another movie, but I'm pretty sure he did that once. And I don't think he did anything else again. <laughs> no, that's probably for the best. Um... <laughs> I guess, I guess, shall we wrap up now, then? Yeah. Cool. I gotta okay, go. Well, so, yeah. that was fun. fun. <laughs> Me it's too. Gonna be a super long, <laughs> it's gonna be a super long podcast. Um, Thank you for joining us, Caitlin. Always lovely to have you here. Yeah, yeah thank you, guys. Let's all, let's all come back next week and do it again. Yeah, hopefully I'll be around, because I missed yeah. you. Hopefully I'll have off. Well, I might be going away this weekend. I don't know. Ooh, where are you going? Um, I might be going to some lake place. I think it's called Lake Grand Teton, or I can't pronounce it correctly. It's in it's in Wyoming. Oh, so the Tetons. That's a yeah. I, I went there once. Oh very, yeah, I heard it's pretty. Scenic. You should bring a camera. <laughs> I will, and so I might camp for like a night or two. Cool. No and I have off Monday for Labor Day, so. Me too. Well, have an amazing time. All right. Bye. Bye.